Welcome back to Dover, where Jimmy Johnson's pitting his low Chevy way back in what used to be no man's land at the top of pit road. Uh, from the commit line to the start of the pit area and into his pit box, he doesn't have to worry about speed in. And then when he takes off, he doesn't have to worry about speed here. And he can really race all the way down here before he's got to slow down uh, because this is the first time section where they can measure his speed. Yeah, he's already in his pit box, and this stop is about completed before everyone else gets to their pit stop. And what I like is he's coming straight down pit road. And when cars are starting to pull out, he can he, he's going straight, so he doesn't have to do anything but just watch cars coming out of their pit box. Watch that maintain pit road speed. Because the wad is going to be from these cars right here. Yeah, and here he comes all by himself. See, there's the 12. See how they have to, they have to take evasive action to keep from running into him. He doesn't have to worry about him running into them. Keep watching. That's a beautiful thing, boys. You did it. Love and added tape. Love it when a plan comes together. My surround sound's getting nervous at home, Larry. Haven't had a chance to exercise it today. Almost halfway through this thing, I just reached up there, grab dial. all the knobs and crank it up. Scott Wimmer, so he gets back up to speed, but just back to that restart, the 19 car, Jeremy Mayfield, like earlier in the race, got a terrible restart. Yeah. Mike on the restart earlier in the race, and also his first pit stop, he had a slight hesitation when he went to get back in the throttle. He's been talking about it to Kenny Francis. They're not really sure what it is, but every time when he's going slow and has to jump back in the gas, the car hesitates. NASCAR has admonished the 31. Yeah, you know, one thing that can be, sometimes these guys get real fuel mileage conscious, and they'll change the squirters in the carburetor to kind of conserve a little fuel. And if you don't get the right ones in there, you mad it, it won't go. Well, let's find out what happened to bring out the fifth caution of the day. Nick Bergman's with Joe Nemechek. He had a huge crash here last fall, Mike. Another big crash today. What happened, Joe? Just unfortunate. Uh... The, the whole U.S. Army crew, USG Sheet Rock, these guys support us. Uh, my car, was, it got tight about 10 laps before that, and I had to keep it right on the bottom and make it go around the corner. And I saw Terry coming on the outside, and I happened to slide up a little bit. And when it slid, I had to let off the gas, and he just barely tapped me in the back. Uh, just one of those racing deals. It's just unfortunate for this crew. Uh, just trying to get a break right now. We've got some awful good race cars, and just got, we haven't been able to find that little good luck charm. And the crew has left. This will get down as a DNF. Did not finish. Remember, he had a bad practice crash here in a test session that nearly derailed his career yeah, for several months. One thing you got to realize, and that why we always are hesitant to say what happened, he just told you what happened. We thought Terry just run into the back of him to get him out of the way because Tony Stewart about to lap him. Joe had a problem, had to lift. Terry got into him. We know Terry's not that kind of guy. You know, as I watched Jimmy Johnson in the Slows 48 car, you know, he qualified back in 14th. I think one of the reasons he qualified back a little bit, this team elected to work mainly on race practice in qualifying practice the other day. And I think with this track position, remember, he swept both races here two years ago. I think this gives them momentum. And along with that pit selection down there, I think they're on the mark now with almost halfway coming up. The other thing I'm wondering is seeing Stewart in the second run drop back a bit after dominating. Did Greg Zipidelli make a major adjustment trying to find out how far was too far, knowing he had 300 miles to make that car and dial it right in for the run toward the finish? Yeah, I'd say that's, 
I'd say my crew chief buddy would probably go along with that. If I'm going to get aggressive, I want to do it early in the race in case I do step across that fence. I can put some back. A lot better to hear that driver whining early than it is hearing <laughs> whining late. You just keep digging. It's going to come to you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Matt, what did they do? Mike back on that lap 33 stop. They made an air pressure jump in all four tires and also made a track bar trying to work on Stewart's center of the corner. Remember I told you, most of the race, it's not bad. His entry is great, but it's not bad in the center, but he just needs to get a little more snug. And that's what they've been working on progressively through the whole race. And one of the things that the crew chiefs and, and some of the drivers are telling me is these tires do not like the air drop way down in them like they had last year last year. These tires got to stay right around recommended. If you go too far, can't drive it. Let's move back to the battle for 11. Kevin Harvick, Matt Kenseth, Dave Blaney, and Brian Vickers, all front runners earlier. Ricky Rudd's made a nice recovery since getting the free pass. He's moved up to 15th ahead of Sterling Marlin, Michael Waltrip, Greg Biffle, and Terry Labonte. But when I do look at Kevin Harvick in 29, so we see the battle right here. This is a battle for third, battle for fourth actually. But going back to Kevin Harvick in uh, the 29 car and Matt Kenseth in the 17, even though we kind of questioned that move they, they made back there by staying out, it got them track position after qualifying so bad. They were able to get that caution, get those four tires, and I think it's paid off now. Closing in on halfway, which will be lap 200. And Tony Stewart, as he did in the first long green run, is well out front. He's now led 95 laps today. Almost twice as many as Jeremy Mayfield. Hope you're having a good Sunday. We welcome you back to Dover, Delaware. NASCAR Next Duck Cup Racing on FX, brought to you by Budweiser. It's time for a fresh one. Grab a Budweiser. The race is on. And this MBNA race summary, Tony Stewart, the leader, Jimmy Johnson, last week's dominator for the Coca-Cola 600, running second. Tony Stewart reached up the lead on lap 162 for the third time today. We've had five leaders and eight lead changes, and so far five cautions. And the, the pit times for Tony Stewart, 14-1, 13-2, and 15-3. Very solid performance right now by Greg Zipidelli and the guys, but more importantly, watching Tony Stewart go through traffic and work traffic as far as guys who are leading in front of him, he has been very methodical, waiting for his car to kind of come in, but once he gets to lead, he steadily pulls away, and doesn't make any difference who it is, he just keeps pulling away. Kurt Busch in the 97 car, who was uh, fast in uh, practice yesterday, a little bit uh, wiggly right now. Well, I guess he's right there in front of Casey Kane, and all of a sudden right middle way to the corner, the car gets, oh, it just breaks loose just a little bit. He has to chase it up the racetrack, and Casey Kane gets underneath him. And uh, one of the other guys that uh, I think want to know what's going on with the 97 car, let's check in with Matt. And the Wiggly that we were talking about, Chris, he was tight earlier in the race and made some adjustments, but now the 97 car is a little too free for Kurt. All right, thanks, Matt. we got a, a battle here with two Everham Dodgers. Jeremy Mayfield, the pole sitter, and you see Casey Kane, the rookie, coming up from fifth. Well, Jeremy had to lead early, and all of a sudden, here come Tony Stewart past him, and now he's getting pressure for uh, fourth place by his teammate, Casey Kane. Casey's car seems like it takes a while for it to come around, Chris, but once the tires build the pressure, he can run either high or low, and right now he's trying to get underneath Jeremy Mayfield as they get ready to come up on the back straight away. And he has Clears moved it. in front of uh, Jeremy Mayfield, and while we're talking teammates, the Penske team, Ryan Newman going for his third straight Dover win, running third, and Rusty Wallace seventh. Uh, Kurt Busch, we saw moments ago, currently ninth, just ahead of Jeff Burton. Yeah, Jeff Burton, I mean, he really kind of rolled the dice early on and stayed out. Uh, one of those times didn't take tires and was really falling back through the pack. Then the caution came, and all of a sudden he's up there in ninth place. And uh, Larry has a pretty bold gamble by Jeff Burton and their crew. Well, it was. It's like Daryl and I were talking the whole time. We knew four tires was much better, but I think a lot like Kevin Harvick and Matt Kenseth, these guys knew if they didn't do something to get off sync, they would never get up to the top ten and get that track position. And he's sitting there in ninth position with pressure from his teammate, though, Mark Martin in the sixth car. Four of the Roush cars within five positions. Behind them come Dave Blaney and then their teammate, Matt Kenseth. So uh, four of the five Roush cars in one very tight pack there trying to work their way back toward the front, which is filled with Chevys and Dodges. The 
Chevys of Stewart and Jimmy Johnson first and second, and then three Dodges, Newman, Kane, and Mayfield. Boy, Robbie Gordon has been sliding that car all day. He has had his hands full since the green flag drop. He is one lap down in 25th. I wouldn't know what to tell him to do to it, Larry. I mean, he's been all over the place. Michael Waltrip trying to work through is a lead lap car in 17th. They got to get going because here comes Tony. Kenny Schrader, last week's birthday boy, along with uh, Dick Burton, back in the race after a track bar repair. As we close to halfway, seven laps from now, we'll see the halfway sign. Yeah, I mean, Tony Stewart in his 20 car, he's pretty much doing right now as we approach the halfway point to this field here at Dover what Jimmy Johnson did to that group at Lowe's Motor Speedway. I mean, you may have not bet on Birdstone yesterday at the Belmont Stakes, but Tony Stewart would have been a pretty good bet here at Dover, Delaware. Ten races, he's never finished worse than 11. Yeah, he's got a 4.3 average finish here, Larry. That's, uh, that's amazing. But that's he may a... have company in a, in a short time with Casey Kane in this nine car, so he just goes by Ryan Newman in 12 for third. And Kane very quickly starts eating up the distance to second place Jimmy Johnson. Stewart in traffic, trying to put Terry Levon in the 18th place car, one lap down. And you know, I, I made this observation about Tony a few weeks ago. I, I still got to think that Indy is a big distraction for him. I think it. I, I just think that uh, once Indy's over with, you see it every year. He seems like he just buckles down and gets the job done. Tony Stewart lapping past Robbie Gordon. He leads Jimmy Johnson by two seconds. Casey Kane by three. Ryan Newman 0.5.